Welcome to Waste Type Wednesday where we are going to look at the various waste types which are out there and the categories within it. When I say waste type, I am referring to plastic, electronic waste, metal, wood, glass, etc. And categories within it. By categories, I am referring about ABS, PET, LDPE, HDPE, multi-layer plastic within the plastic waste type. In the same way, if you take metal as a waste type, then within metal there are various categories, copper, aluminium, iron. So that is what we are going to look at as part of the waste type Wednesday. I am Praveen Kumar, the creator, educator at Thrash the Trash, an online learning social platform for you to create an impact or income in waste management. In this video, we are going to look at the waste type from a four perspective. First, in terms of the growth, the figures. Next, the futures. What are the factors, futures that contributed towards the growth of this particular waste type? Next, the trend. Why is there such a trend? A good, bad, ugly or adverse trend, whatever it might be. Why is it happening? Is there any alternate, any solution for that? And what are the challenges associated with that? And last, we are going to look at the legislation. What is happening with the legislation? Can something more can be done? And what are the challenges when it comes to the legislation? Now, let's get into the video. We are going to look at plastic as a waste type in today's video. Plastic, if you take, it's an amazing product or you can say it's an amazing commodity. It's used everywhere. Or look at the objects that you use on your day-to-day -day life. Plastic is there everywhere. Right from the morning when the milk pouch arrives, the packaging, the electronic devices that we use in the automobiles. So everywhere plastic is there. And if you look at in terms of growth, globally, 300 million tons of plastic is generated every year. 300 million tons per annum at a global level every year. And if you take India, 10 million tons per annum is what is estimated. If you ask me, I am very skeptical about these numbers because these numbers are something which has been accounted for but a majority chunk of it is still unaccounted especially in the developing and undeveloped nations and if you look at single-use plastic the type of plastic which is generally being used once like your carry bags your juice cups packaging after that it gets discarded as the waste in us alone 100 billion pieces per annum of single-use plastic was discarded. Think about it, 100 billion pieces per annum. Then think about country like India, how much of single-use plastic we are discarding every day, every annum. Think about that. So this is what is happening in terms of the growth. Next, we are going to look at the factors, the futures, which is causing of which are influencing the growth. If you look at plastic, it is a byproduct of oil refining. It is easily available. And if you look at the economics, it is cheapest to produce, to get. Moreover, it is lightweight, which adds much more advantage to it and it is easy to mold. And within plastic, there are multiple categories, ABS, PET, PP, multi-layer plastic. Each has its own advantages so because of those reasons plastic is being used in multiple applications in our day-to-day -day life now at this point you might be thinking or asking is there a solution is there an alternate there are multiple alternates for plastic but why is it not so successful in my previous tech tuesday video as part of the eight hours of trash technology, especially in the raw material part, I use a terminology called safe, suitability, viability, feasibility, and the economics. Try to apply the same over here for the alternate product. Whatever is the alternate product, is it suitable? Is it as good as plastic? If not as good as plastic, can it be used as a substitute, if not as an alternate? We have paper bags, cloth bags. Let's go to the next step, the viability. In the long run, will these alternate products be able to outsmart, outnumber the plastic? Do you think it is going to happen? If not, 
what are the reasons for that if you take plastic you use it you just discard it you just throw it but when it comes to cloth bag it has a longer lifespan but at the same time look at the economics the last one let's go to there next let's look at the feasibility factor is it possible for a mass production of this alternate product so that it can outnumber plastic so that everybody can have a mass adaptation of an alternate product is there such a possibility if not what are the reasons if you need to have a mass alternate readily available easily available then there is going there has to be an investment not only an investment will do there has to be support from the government subsidy or incentive if there is no subsidy or incentive what is going to happen the alternate products is going to be much much more expensive than plastic already it is much expensive than when compared with plastic so because of that reason the last part of safe the economics is not working out so whatever is the alternate people are not able to afford it or they think that that is not something which is suitable feasible or economical for them that's why plastic is still date or in the future it is going to be used in volume let's look at the trend the accumulated plastic if you look at it's more than 8 billion tons it's a accumulated why the word accumulated because we are producing consuming so much of plastic at one end it is growing drastically but on the other hand there is a very less processing or the way to handle plastic so because of that there is a huge parity and the waste gets accumulated and if you look at figures less than 10 to 20 percent of the plastic gets recycled the balance either ends up in landfill or it is still unaccounted for then you might be asking me is there no solution at all there are solutions if you look at the business model there are 15 plus business models out of that what you think is going to be the most suitable one for processing waste type maybe upcycling when you say upcycling we are talking about 8 billion tons accumulated 300 million tons per annum globally what fraction of percentage do you think can be upcycled you can't do upcycling in volume at scale upcycling can make only a marginal difference so the next option we have is recycling again in recycling it's already happening there is no doubt about that but then why there is still so much plastic still left for a couple of reasons whatever is a waste plastic it can be recycled two or three times at most if you try to go beyond that the same plastic if it get recycled more than two or three times the quality drops if the quality drops then where do you think it is going to be used will anybody be interested to buy that plastic now you might be asking me you are saying two or three times then why that 8 billion tons why wasn't it recycled at least once or twice why it did not happen let me tell you why for that we have to travel back take a step back to understand from where the plastic waste is originating from households from shops offices industries and other places if you take house as an example whatever plastic that we use at home where do you throw it we throw it in the dustbin do you think only plastic is going to the dustbin no we add other waste along with that food waste paper waste sanitary waste electronic waste so everything goes together into the single dustbin once it is mixed where do you think it next goes it goes to the landfill that is why we have a huge mountain of landfill out there almost in every city and in that plastic is just a fraction the balanced plastic it is dumped here and there and nobody cares about it and whatever comes from industry that is something that can be processed or handled why because those plastic it is in the good form pure form as part of the 8 hours of trash technology raw material video i have spoken about the input raw material 
quality and the input form. Can the machine, any trash technology, whether it is recycling or whatever it might be, will it be able to accept the waste as such or something has to be done to it? Or if the waste is mixed, will the machine be able to accept? If the waste is in pure form, that means only one type of plastic, it could be purely PET bottles, then the machine will be able to accept. Or it could be ABS, PP, then it can be further processed. But what if it is mixed, PET mixed with multi-layer plastic, single-use plastic, then what, is, what do you think is going to happen? Will the machine be able to accept? Any pre-treatment is required such as sorting or segregation and then only will the machine accept. What if the plastic is mixed with other waste like food waste, dust? Then in that case, what is going to happen? Will you be able to recycle it? Because what goes in is what comes out. If the input quality is good or decent, the output is going to be good or decent. If it is mixed or bad, the output is going to be mixed or bad. So the input raw material that is one major problem and what is the incentive the benefit will someone get to process that waste there has to be a mechanism an incentive for someone to process collect and process or recycle the plastic waste again whatever is the output that is coming out there has to be a demand for it and acceptance for it the pricing has to be correct enough so that someone would be interested to buy it. Let's go to the next option, re-engineering, converting the plastic waste into another product. It could be plastic to fuel, plastic to oil, plastic to energy, plastic to another product. It could be a paper block, it could be a plastic product or plastic into road construction material. All this sounds very amazing, nice, it's already taking place. But you cannot compare any of this with the traditionally manufactured product because each has its own advantage and disadvantages. And there has to be acceptance for these type of products. The first one is the acceptance that someone or some organization should be interested to buy these kind of re-engineered product to be used in bulk that is in terms of the acceptance mass adaptation number two and think about in terms of the pricing considering the innovation the effort to collect process and convert that into a product this cannot act as an alternate to the existing traditionally manufactured product it can act as a substitute then what about the pricing the economics it can't be of the same price with the traditionally manufactured product if it is going to be higher than the traditionally manufactured product what extent of the population will be interested to buy it then for that there has to be a way of support from the government subsidy or incentive so that these products can be made affordable but again when the price drops then the quality comes into picture whether this re-engineered product is of good quality what about the lifetime what about will it impact the performance what is it going to be so all this question comes into picture as long as the waste comes in the right form in a pure form or in a decent form then it will be easier to process either recycling or re-engineering. If it gets messy or mixed up, then it becomes difficult to process. So these are the factors hampering the plastic processing. Last, we are going to look at the legislation. If you think that it is the government fault that they let this happen, then you are wrong. It is not the government's fault alone. It's a collective mistake. It's a collective responsibility and accountability has to be there you and me as an individual we have to be responsible accountable then only this can be addressed just the government alone cannot do anything they need support from the various stakeholders from the producers the manufacturers the various governing bodies general public then only it's going to be a successful one to reduce the plastic waste so when it comes to legislation government also have 
come up with the best to address the situation it may not be the 100% effective a good one but they have tried the level best and whatever regulation you see it has been taken or adapted from other international countries it's not a pure blind copying but rather it is an adaptation because what works in one nation especially in the developed nation need not work in another country so they have just adapted the best practices that can address the existing issue and any regulation even if i say the government any government not only in india any government has the power to change the whole regulation legislation overnight but then for that change to be effective the solution has to be rock solid if you want to remove or reduce plastic then the alternate has to be good enough so that people are able to afford and use it without any alternate if the regulation is tightened it's not going to work it's going to eventually fail and that is what is happening so government are trying to amend make changes as and when it is required and the government cannot take such decision drastically because plastic industry if you take millions of workers are there and there is no alternate any drastic decision is going to affect the livelihood of the people the whole industry which in turn is going to affect the whole economical situation so it's not that simple to bring any regulation in the country spreading awareness to the consumers reduce plastic consumption it hasn't worked because there is no alternate segregation at source it has started but it's going to take decades for that to happen so what the government then thought whoever is producing manufacturing using the plastic or importing they should be held accountable for because they are using the plastic manufacturing the plastic selling the plastic and making a profit so they should be accountable for the plastic they have sold produced in the market so that is how extended producer responsibility epr came into picture for plastic so as part of that whoever is manufacturing using plastic in the products or importing plastic so they are responsible for collection and processing so now the government has moved from collaboration mode to a very stringent regulation so that there is more accountability and responsibility that in turn will cascade down this is what plastic as a waste type in the next waste type wednesday i'm going to talk about electronic waste I'll see you tomorrow with an another video as part of the Thrasher Thursday where I'm going to talk about the various area of expertise knowledge or passion which you can leverage to create an influence impact or income in waste management and in tomorrow's video I'm going to talk about computer science how you can use technology to influence waste management as an outsider